Howdy folks, thanks for joining me, day, joining me today. Now, this is Howie here at Cedar Creek Homestead. I hope you're having a wonderful and blessed day. And Hey, I uh, you've probably seen on some of my videos before, uh, I have a purple Martin house. And anyway, I'm going to put another one up today. And uh, there's kind of a trick to drawing in purple Martins or certain things. I'll try to go over some of that. But nonetheless, uh, they're fun to watch. And uh, the purple Martins... They claim eat a lot of bugs. Now, some are saying that that is not true, that there's no benefit from them, but I don't believe that. I think the purple martins, there are other type of martins also, and uh, there's some, I forget the title of them, but I want to get them started around here too. They say they eat a lot of ticks and things. These here, they say eat a lot of mosquitoes, and at the, in the evening, about dark time, they'll be out just flying all over the field there, and I think they're eating mosquitoes. I think there is something to it, but nonetheless... The Amish people, we have a group of Amish people up to the north of us, not too far from here, and all of them have a lot of purple martin houses. Whether that really helps lower their population of mosquitoes, I don't know, but we have an abundance of mosquitoes. And, you know, now you have the Nile virus and all that stuff. But the purple martins, if they eat the mosquitoes, that's great. They can have all them they want because that's something we don't want here at the homestead. But one thing that these uh, that's kind of neat is these um, purple martins, they go south for the winter. So they'll show up kind of early in the season. And about a month ago, we seen two of them show up. And they say those are scouts, that they're coming, uh, looking the area over, and then they'll draw in others. And so they come in and uh, they uh, will nest here, hatch babies. Then they'll go back south for the winter, and then they come back, which is pretty interesting. And uh, we have them out in the backyard where we can sit on our back porch and we can watch them. Um, they also like, without a whole lot of limbs and things around close, trees and stuff, they like an open area. And if you have a power line that comes by pretty close to where their nest box is, you know, we don't have to be right up on them, but enough where they can fly off the away from the nest, the house that you put up for them, and they can fly over and land on this power line. They love that, and you'll see how ours is set up here. But the Amish and other people that I know that have these, uh, sometimes the Amish, because they don't have electricity, they may run a wire up in the air across. Not all of them do that, but some of them do, but they'll have a means that the uh, or if there's a power line a public utility that comes through even though they don't use the electric they'll build them over kind of close to that that's the ideal situation now there's always exceptions to the norm but you also have other birds that want to nest in there so the best shape is like a little half moon shape for the opening for them to go in and you'll see that on this house but anyway uh, this here is a S and K brand and uh, you can get these uh, s &K Manufacturing. They sell these at Tractor Supply, at Woods. You can get them on Amazon, Walmart. I think you can order them through there. Just about everywhere. Um, and the uh, Purple Martins really depend on human interaction. And this is what the house is going to look like when we get done. And uh, they have an uh, uh, expandable kit that you can get that uh, you can add these, uh, make it a trump tower if you want to. Here right now, uh, this is just a normal uh, Motel 6, or you can uh, make a Gaylord Opera Land Hotel out of it if you want to. <laughs> but uh, anyway, uh, there's, I'll show you there's a pole. They even have a special offer with this. You can get a free DVD. Uh, about purple martins there's a lot of videos online about purple uh, martins and uh, as you can tell on this here the shape of these little holes and uh, that is to uh, make deter other birds from going in other birds don't like that type of opening and then the purple martins also like to set up along the top. So we're going to put this thing together. You don't have to have any screwdriver, nothing. It pops together. You can see these little white deals? 
those will stick in here this thing's real easy to stick together i've got one like this but it looks like a red barn and i've had it for a few years now it's all plastic it's lightweight but it's withstood uh, very severe storms it's still out there doing wonderful i just decided i would expand and do more and the next step may be next year i might might see about if i can get this here expandable one and show that uh, add it on to uh, this but um, anyway um, it's fun and interesting and you can clean these out once a year i'll just show you and when i get it together I'll show you but this here piece these three that will fold out and you can clean that out and take the old stuff out but you need to do it before they start uh, uh, getting here and also this is made for 12 um, purple martin so if you expanded it um, got another additional house you could put together with this and you'd have room for 24 pairs of purple martins that's a lot of birds you can also, I've got this pole kit here we're going to use today, is this TTP, TTP12, and it's sold separately. So if you're wanting to get into Purple Martins, you can also make homemade houses. The problem with the homemade ones, if you get them too heavy, you've got to get them up in the air pretty high, and sometimes that's a little problem. If you can do that, well, that that's fine. If you can do that without, you know, lift up something heavy in the air, that'd be great, but this plastic really does work good. One thing here, this says that you don't need any tools, and I was just going to show you something that's different than the old versions. You put a plug in like this, and then it's got a little, looks like a Phillips head screw. It's just plastic, and it snaps in there. If you need to take that back out, you can use a Phillips screwdriver, hold it still, and it will come back out, because sometimes you make a mess up. But anyway, uh, the old versions, if you've had one of the old versions, um, they just had plugs that went in here white looking plugs and my other one has got those so this is kind of an upgraded feature to these and just pointing that out in case you uh, make a mess up you can get them back out they will strip out real easy because they're just plastic if you do it right they'll go in there and they'll stay and uh, what keeps them in is you put this little screw looks like a little Phillips headed screw when you poke it down through that hole like I'm doing
doing right here and you stick that down in there like that and then that holds it some of these holes do not have anything it holds together this piece it's got a little prong that goes up through there so uh just to show you in case you get one of these the roof starts in by these little it's got a little slot that goes in then you have those screws i messed up here and missed the, the hole with these so i had to back them back out and you can see how it stripped that uh, that out there let's show you the uh, trump towers here um, i've got it tilted up here but uh, in fact let me set it flat and <clears throat> show you a few things about this when you want to clean it you can raise that up like that and get in here and clean now this got a hole all the way through here if you can see that there's a hole goes all the way through to the bottom and when you're doing your uh, covering here um, when you're doing you have to tear this piece out what's going to block that in is your pole I'll show you your pole in a minute it's going to go all the way through from the bottom all the way up through here up into the loft of this thing so just so you understand that's why you tear that out it's already pre-cut now if you want to make these a big room and all the way through you can take out this here but I just leave it leave this solid it does really well you can also it's got a hole here if you wanted to make a bigger hole like for a different type of bird but the purple martins they're little enough they'll go right through here they got plenty of air they got a little air hole there and there and it's even got little shutters if you can see that <laughs> <laughs> but you could drill a bigger hole. You could cut this out bigger if you wanted. But uh, this discourages other birds from getting in. This um, balcony here, and to hold that in, it's got to, to snap this in. It's got a little catch. And you push that down and that down, and that'll allow you to open this up. Very, very easy. They even make, you can get little foam pieces or take a piece of this foam like you use for graveside flowers that you stick them in and you can make little nests for them if you want to i've not done that they don't seem to have any trouble getting in there and making their nest but anyway it's got this little balcony here what that's for the birds can perch on that but when the babies are new they're going to come out here out of this these little holes and they'll get their strength built up before they start flying away so this little catch right here will help protect them from just falling off. If they come out day one and it didn't have that, <clears throat> they would just start falling off. Up here on the peak of this thing is really, really sharp. Real, uh, I don't know how to explain it, but it's real, like comes to a really sharp peak. And that's a good area for the, the uh, purple martins to land on. It also has built-in gutters, rain gutters here. And that helps to, when the rain comes down, hits the top of the roof, it's going to hit here, run down and drip this way to help keep perhaps from getting the babies wet in a thunderstorm or something. Um, <clears throat> but anyway, that's kind of how that thing works. And here's your hole. It's triangular. And uh, it, your, your pipe, your metal piece is going to go all the way up through there. This may not look like it's all that strong. This isn't all that heavy. It's pretty light structure, but uh, it'll really hold together in the event of a storm. And the one that I've got now, the pegs just pushed in, and they've actually held up well. And I thought this was gonna be that way. And on the picture, it shows these being white, these little pegs being little white pegs, but it's this new style they've come out with. So they keep redesigning and coming up with better and better uh, structures this structure is in the $40 range and I'll tell you by the time if you're busy like I am by the time you bought the lumber painted it put it together and stuff you're gonna have 40 bucks in it and you're not gonna be able to get it this lightweight maybe you don't care about being lightweight but I do because I gotta lift the thing up there and one thing is they hold up good but in the wind when it's blowing being lighter and it's gonna be on this pole you got to get them up out up up high and they'll nest up high because if you get too low you also invite predators like snakes and cats and squirrels and stuff to get up there but by doing it up real high, they can't 
nothing get in there and uh, it works this thing just these work really really well and uh, I was going to show you real quick the uh, now that I got it together I'm sorry I didn't have much of a video putting this all together and it's really not hard um, uh, I just uh, one thing kind of caught me was these little pegs that they send they send you a few extras uh, a couple of extras in case you break one or something so that's a good thing but here's the pole um, 15 foot pole and uh, that's made for this uh, this here and it's a triangle type I'm gonna take it apart here and I'll show you what it looks like and here it shows a picture of this house up on top of it and we'll see what it's going to look like here well I got the new house up in the uh, purple Martins <laughs> there's already some here this other one at times had them just everywhere and uh, now this one has uh, as you can tell I'm calling that Trump Towers I call this one over here Green Acres this little red barn one and uh, so now I'm gonna call this Trump Towers here but anyway the uh, purple Martins are already uh, using that thing and it ain't been up but just a little while here I uh, an hour or so and uh, but I finally got it up in the they don't thought I'd do a finished video I got started doing it and Stacy she's been working on the strawberry bed here and we're got new strawberry pants plants we're gonna put out here and maybe I'll do a video on that here too today but anyway uh, we got it up and uh, just show you a little bit what I do is I take a pipe and put it in the ground and then uh, this pipe is way down way down in there it's probably four or five foot I take the tractor and push it down what I did with my last house and that seemed to work good and then I slide this pipe down and I have a bolt in there to keep it because this makes a hole in the ground it keeps from dropping the thing all the way down and then I bolt it and uh, I put a little piece of uh, stuff on the other side because it was kind of a little bit loose and I, I got a little bit of adjustment there to do but anyhow when you go to putting it together it's got red marks and you slide these little pins in there's two of them one up there and up at the very top something this pole's got that's better than the last one I did is it's got little push button little clips that will snap into your uh, little house and it goes all the way up through the center of it so that really makes it strong and makes it last but uh, over here I've had this one I'm not sure I four or five years anyway but uh, the uh, uh, way it's made it's the same brand of house but they have done some improvements and uh, have come out with some better things but this thing as soon as we put it up the first year uh, we put that thing up the purple martin started coming in here and what we got the sun's over that way but you can probably see this power line comes right through here now this is down far enough if it fell it's not going to touch the power lines there's a hot, whole lot of room here it may look like it's close but you don't want to get right up against your power lines nothing like that don't be dumb with it uh you know use common sense it says that on the packaging and because this here pipe if you touch that against a power line it's going to kill you i mean instantaneously uh if you touch that against the power line you're dead and uh but anyway this thing's got these little clips and uh, you turn them and it would slide this pole slides up in there but it is a booger trying to get it to go but I on it the same way I drove a pipe in the ground put a bolt through and I put one to keep it from going down too far and uh, this rest on that there and then I put a bolt in that's how I did the old one and it's lasted all this time here in Oklahoma we get such big old um, winds but I had to use a bigger pipe this time this triangle type of deal they have it's kind of a triangular shaped thing is uh, bigger so it's a little bit harder to get it in there 
and uh, but anyway i put a bolt here and bolt it in but there's other ways there's a way you can put it down and buy a little piece to put down in the ground and do stuff but what i didn't want was this thing uh kept blowing over in a storm and uh, since that one did so well kind of an idea i had kind of my own engineering and this being along my fence uh, i can take uh, uh there's little clips you can buy and weld on to weld your fence on here and i've got to restretch some of this fence anyway and redo it so i'll uh, get my welder out here and fix that up i don't know if you notice as we's filming but i like uh, bird houses <laughs> And uh, every one of these little bird houses we have uh, uh, names for, but people get me bird houses and give them to me for presents and stuff. And uh, I like putting them up. And there's guests, and every one of these has got nest in them already. And uh, down there's one. My uncle gave me this one here, and it's got a little storm damage to it. Actually, this is a bird feeder. Uh, this little old thing that he made and uh, you can tell I've, it's getting old. I've had it a long time the woods all But uh, what I'm going to do instead of feeding birds I'm gonna put a top back on it. The top is blown off and I'm gonna drill a hole in and make a birdhouse out of it I might make it in two pieces, but just kind of want to keep it because my uncle he uh, he's still living But he's getting way on up in years and I think it's kind of neat that he made that with his own hands and gave to me and uh, we call that down there the uh, SRS we have a feed store here called SRS and so uh, it's kind of got a porch on it kind of an old building like that but I'll take you down through here and show you my other uh, bird houses that may not or bird feeders and houses here's one uh, it's just a feeder that I bought, a store bought one, but it's got this thing on it where if a squirrel gets up here, it pulls it down and they can't get the feed. So it kind of weights it down and they can't reach in there. And I put sunflower seeds in here, but uh, the squirrels do. They come up here and they try it and they pull on that and they can't get no seeds. And they, so far, <clears throat> I've seen a few do it, but they don't come back. But if they could ever figure out how to do it, they would just keep going. There's one. Uh, was made given to me and here's one uh, we call this one the gore gym we have an old gym down here that's green colored and i need to repaint that it's getting my father-in-law made that and gave it to me for christmas and uh, then he uh gave me this in here in fact my father-in-law made all three of these and there is a guest staying in this one too but anyway this uh, is like a made out of pvc pipe but he took a oklahoma tag he thought would be neat and uh, put up there and it's a farm tag and uh, it also is a 1969 tag and that was the year i was born so uh, i thought that was pretty neat then I have an OU, uh, OU Sooner, being an Oklahoma person. Of course, I'm a Sooner fan, so uh, I made me an Oklahoma Sooner wagon. I bought this little old wagon from Tractor Supply, and the first year it just fell all to pieces. It was so cheap and cheesy made. So what I did, these, these wheels are actually uh, steel. So uh, I cut me out some wood and made a little house out of it. It's kind of a crude uh, design but that's the way that it was when i bought it kind of like but now i've got real thick wood and painted and i put the little top on there and i was going to paint ou on there and uh, because my father-in-law and family they come here and visit about once a year and uh, we always enjoy it for uh, my brother-in-law and, and his wife and kids and everything they show up here and I kind of like to aggravate them a little bit and tease them about things, but I wanted to put OU on that. My wife, she wants, uh, she, you know, she's from Arkansas, so she likes them Razorbacks, and that's where they're from, but uh, I like my OU stuff, so I kind of put stuff that way. Uh, anyhow, uh, we, uh, this little bit here about the Purple Martins, uh, just to show you again here, you can see at this angle in the sun, ain't you? But you can see that power line comes right through here and uh the uh the hot lines up on top on your power lines this bottom one's a ground one 
but I'm going to tell you, you don't want to touch either one of those lines. Just stay away from power lines. And I can't stress that enough. I've heard of people putting these up and out with a pole like this and touch over the power line. Uh, and it just instantly, you're probably, if you're not dead, you're going to think you are because there is a lot of volts that looks innocent going across there, but there's a whole lot. So I just want to warn one more time about that. But nonetheless, you, were, you can tell how far these are away from there. There's no way they're going to touch the power line or hurt. But those Purple Martins love to have a power line. It don't have to be this close, but they love to have a, where, a way or somewhere that they can land on and... Uh, uh, roost and so uh, after a while and it was earlier today there that we have a bunch of them come in here and uh, they come in I guess what they've done is raise new ones they hatch out in this house over here this one holds uh, has got 16 rooms in it this new one only has uh, 12 holes in it that's 12 pairs and over here 16 pairs of uh, purple martins and I think we've got enough to fill them up in fact I'm gonna get another one not this year but uh, I think every year I'm gonna get to adding another purple martin house uh, down through here and just keep bringing them in because it seems like they're really they really like it and they raise and they'll be here until fall then they'll head out and uh, but in the evening time we'll sit over here on our porch there's uh, Josie over there now sitting uh, watching and she uh, We'll sit out here and have coffee and watch the birds. Anyway, appreciate you watching. If you're not a subscriber, we'd appreciate you subscribing. And uh, if you got a comment, comment there. Put a thumbs up. God bless you. Thanks for watching. We'll see you next time. We're gone.